The UX100 CPU cooler by Thermaltake offers straightforward cooling installation for both AMD and Intel CPUs. The UX100 offers a cooling performance rating of 65 watts TDP, and we recommend that the CPU you plan to use supports at least 65 watts or less for proper cooling performance. Now, speaking of cooling performance, the UX100 offers a nine blade fan design with a three pin connection that will be connected directly to your motherboard for the fan to properly operate. And you'll also get some nice ARGB illumination with the ARGB connection going directly to your motherboard and then having the lighting controlled through your motherboard's software. Now, you'll also get some additional accessories in the kit, including the Intel mounting bracket, the Intel mounting hardware, a nice little breakdown for both the parts as well as a step-by-step -step guide on how to install it for both Intel and AMD. And of course, for any CPU, you're gonna need some thermal paste or thermal grease to be able to install between the CPU and the cooler. And with this one in particular, we wanna make sure we remove that protective film before installation. So let's move forward here with installing our UX100 on an Intel-based platform. The UX100 offers a variety of Intel CPU socket types, focusing on LGA775 through 1150X, as well as 1366. So if you have an 1151, 1155, 1156 CPU socket type, this cooler will work and it is all listed in our specifications. Now, in order for that to be compatible and how everything mounts on here, I have a Z390 motherboard, we're using an i3 CPU today that has a 65 watt TDP. Now to mount the UX100 to the motherboard, you are gonna need the included Intel mounting bracket. Now on this bracket, you're gonna have a couple of different markings in here indicating the 775, 1150X and 1366 markings for the three different positions that we're gonna be using our mounting hardware for with our Intel bracket. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our mounting hardware as well. We're gonna have two different types in here. One is going to be the clear pins that we have, which will secure the bracket to the motherboard. And these are very important as they do have two little fins on each side that slot directly into the bracket and then they're gonna hold their position depending on where you're going to put it. For the motherboard that we're gonna be using, it's an 1150X, so we're gonna be putting this in the middle position. Now, the easiest way to install this is to just take the Intel bracket like so. I'll go ahead and I'll just set it over basically the ballpark of where the four mounting holes are on the motherboard. And we're gonna just take our four mounting pins like this, and we're gonna just line them up on the little slots for each one, and then just carefully let it, usually the first one, just kind of let it sit in there. Don't. Don't push it down, just kind of let it get seated and hold its place. Then go ahead and work yourself around to each of the other three locations and just get everything to just kind of line up. So that way I just kind of get those two in place. That should make the last two even easier. And I'll just set these in here like so. Just make sure that you're lining up those fins accordingly and you should feel it seat down into the motherboard. All right, let's get this last one in. All right, now that I have the four clear pins that we have into the four locations with the bracket, I'm gonna gently pick my motherboard up and I'm gonna use my other thumb on this hand and I'm just gonna kind of push and snap the four other locations in. What this is gonna do is this is gonna now secure the bracket itself to the motherboard and you're gonna have the four clear pins poking through on the back side. So do make sure that you got that. Should be pretty straightforward once you feel it seat down in there and it should be holding the bracket on nicely. Now we're gonna have our four black locking pins. And basically what you're gonna do with these is you're gonna go in and push those through the center part of those mounting holes that we placed. And this is gonna lock it down into place or basically secure the bracket and hold it into uh, the motherboard so that way when we apply the pressure of mounting the cooler, it's not going to take the bracket and separate the bracket from that. So making sure that's nice and sturdy, you'll have those four pins, push them all the way down in. You'll feel a nice little bit of pressure when it seats itself. And then of course, flip over to the back and just locate those four black pins poking through those clear little clips. Should give you a good indication. 
Now that we have the bracket installed on the cooler, we have the cooler next to install, but we do first need to talk about a couple of things here with the UX100 specifically. First and foremost, we do recommend adding some thermal paste between the CPU and the cooler. It's required, you have to do it. We include some in the box. You don't have to use ours though, if you have your own that you would prefer to use, but it's nice and convenient. And with this, there's a simple pre-tear located on here with an extra little section on it. So you can get a nice, clear, little simple bead. Basically, I usually like to do like an X type of pattern with the thermal compound or just a nice little bead or pea size right here in the middle of the CPU. Now, once thermal paste and everything is aside, we're gonna remove the protective film on the underside of the cooler. And the cooler itself is gonna have two locking points. One is gonna have a tab on this side and the other is not. Now you're gonna notice on the Intel bracket that there are clips or retention little hooks for the cooler in multiple locations. Your motherboard layout might vary depending on the heat sinks and the design. So plan accordingly to what's gonna make it convenient for you. Usually with the back clip that I'm not gonna really need to get to, I would hook it to say this section over here cause there's not a lot of room. And then that would give me the section where the tab is the part that I'm gonna need to press down over on this side. So I got plenty of room to get that locked into place. Now this cooler can be tricky for a couple of people. So this is the easiest technique I've come, come to figure out. I'm gonna grab the tab once I have the other side connected and I'm gonna pull it out. I'm gonna push it down and I'm gonna hook it in. So it's an out, down and in type of technique that you're gonna be using on this side to lock the cooler down in place once you have the other side hooked into the bracket. So thermal paste, go ahead, get that applied. We have our thermal compound on there. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna lock in one point of the cooler and then clip it and secure it with the complete installation on the other side. Take my motherboard, rotate it like this, make it a little bit easier. I have my finger on the tab on this side. And then over here, I'm just gonna just set the cooler down just on top. Cause you're gonna wanna watch that thermal paste that you're gonna have on there. Of course, you don't wanna get that all over the place. And we're just gonna go ahead and latch in the one side. Sometimes it can be a little tricky getting this one to hook in when you can't see too much. But once you have it in place, it should hold. And then you basically just have your thumb on the tab on this side. Now going forward with repeating that process that I was just talking about, let me rotate this so you can see it a little bit better, but flipping it over on this side, now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull out on the tab, we're gonna push down and we're gonna hook it in. And that's gonna be able to connect our cooler to the bracket we just installed and now hold the cooler in place. Again, make sure that you don't forget your thermal paste and especially don't forget to remove the plastic cover so that you get the optimal performance there. And with the UX100 low profile design, please take note of the 33.8 millimeter clearance for your memory. Some of those RGB memories can be quite tall and the clearance is about 1.3 inches. So do double check that to make sure that you don't have any issue with the cooler hitting the memory, depending on how tall the memory is gonna be for that in that regard. Now, the last things that you got to do here is uh, take your cables and we'll just untie these. And you're gonna have two things to connect up. One is gonna be the three pin connection. Now this is gonna go over to the motherboard. This is gonna be your CPU fan header and you will plug this in. So that way the motherboard will then give power to your fan as well as be able to check the RPMs in case there is any type of issue. And then of course, we also have that glorious RGB. And if your motherboard does support an ARGB five volt connection, like this one right here, has a couple of those up there. We do have the breakdown for where everything goes for each pin in the manual. So refer to that based on your motherboard brand. And that should be straightforward to connect it up to that three pin connection. So that way the RGB will then be controlled by your motherboard. And that's it for the UX100 Intel installation. I hope this helps you out for your install, for your cooler, and feel free to let us know your take on the UX100, and we'll see you next time.